G'day folks, Jason and Nick here on the Utter Farm. We're actually on the Utter Farm property today. What I want to show you today is the amount of rain we've had in the last six months. You can probably hear it, I'm walking through it right now. Our annual rainfall here in, on our Utter Farm property is 36 inches annually. Over the last six months alone, we've had 30 inches in total. And not only that, the last month had nine and a half inches of that. You can probably see next to me now, I'm probably up into sort of eight inches of water. This is our driveway area. I've got galoshes on. We haven't been able to come through here for the last few months because it's just been absolute quagmire. We've come through limited amount when necessary and we've had to use four wheel drive. We don't rip up the road anymore. Hence why we're going all weather road through here. We've finished the watering system as you might know. But the next thing is to get a road that we can access from the front of our property right through to the front of the river. What we want to do now is we're going to go around and assess what damage has been done after that rainfall. Because that nine inches come down, it's been pretty constant for the last month. So we're going to have a look at a few erosion areas and have a look what it's done to road. Because I know a road up there washes out dramatically in less of rain than we've had. So we don't know what it's like, we're going to head up and assess that road and also assess the dam. Once I get out of here, we'll be right. We're down at the dam now, obviously. This is where I put that pipe through to stop the water running through and causing that channel erosion through that dam wall. We've probably lost six inches of clay on the top of here. And there's a fair bit more coming off through here. I can see the clay's washed into the dam here. And there is a star picket showing there. And there's about a foot missing here. So overall, I reckon we've probably lost 18 inches. But that's also due to heavy traffic. I notice the cows continually walk through there. They're probably loosening this top surface up and it's washing through. The other side, it's probably worse off because it is starting to erode right through here now. And there's a big washout underneath that pipe. So it's coming through with force, dropping out of that pipe and that washout, yeah, that's, that'd be eight inches deep. What we had intentionally wanted to do was spoon that out a bit and put a heap of rocks, say about six inch the size, down there. So what, what's causing that? The soil's running down there too. It's slowing the flow. With those rocks, it would spool out of that drain pipe, hit the rocks, slow down and go all directions and then go through to the ground rather than eroding and washing out. Now that's a foot deep. It's now created a channel and now washed under the pipe and washed this clay area that's come through here, dug it out underneath, which now has caused this to collapse. As it's getting worse and worse, this whole lot through here has now collapsed down. We should have gone under it earlier, but like I said, we had that much rain, we couldn't have got the tractor through anyway. So what we plan on doing now is building this back up here and also out to here. But then we've got either two options we can do. We can either stack rocks up these walls, the same on the inside of the dam wall, stack rocks up so when the water hits those rocks, it goes through and isn't directly compacting the clay and have them right up to the top surface. And then we can lay mulch out on the top surface. That way the cows are pushing that mulch in with seed and that seed then propagates on the top and puts a nice layer of grass across that top surface. Once we do that and we've had the cows walking through, then we'll fence this area off to let that grass germinate Totally. And eventually that grass will start creeping over. We could even remove those rocks and have the grass then slowly coming down this hill because predominantly we want to re remove the rocks because you're taking away pasture that can be eaten. Move the rocks away from this damn wall but have the grass slowly come down and as the more grass comes down, we'll come down the bottom to a point where there's no rocks at all. But my main here is to get this here dug out and put rocks in to stop the erosion to start with. What we'll do now is we'll head down and we'll have a look at the creek crossing and also the road. After looking at the mess here, I don't think it's going to be very pretty on the road going up to the hill to the river. Just heading down to the creek now, approximately right here where the area has had a chance to dry up. It's real wet here, slippery. So obviously the water has come to here. We noticed we went down the Sunshine Coast for a few days and it was torrential rain there. And on the way down, one of the bridges we normally cross over is normally a airspace below the bridge of six foot. 
it was about two or three inches below going over that bridge. Hence why at that point there, this is so wet, this would have been right underwater to the point, it's that slipper and nearly fell over. This gum tree here, there's a watermark. I don't know if you can see it from there. There's a watermark there. So it roughly would have been in the middle of this creek here where it's running across our road. I'm probably a foot lower here. So it would have been roughly at my neck height and that was four days ago. Southeast Queensland cop an absolute torrential. That's where our water catchment comes from. But it was up and down in that four days because we've got a vast wide river at the Mary River and we aren't far from the ocean. So in four days it come from there and come down. So it's basically flash flooding from the catchment area. What we'll do now is we'll head up and we'll have a look at the road and find out if there's any damage up there. This doesn't look terribly good. All this sand here, I just cleared this out probably seven months ago because the road had eroded out from last lot of rain we had. I can see this is all freshly based down here. So it's like, I don't like the chances of this not being eroded when I get up to the corner here. This is all fresh sand. It's probably a foot higher because I cleared it out there. I can see the base of that plant, but now that's probably three quarters of a foot under by the look. So it's not going to be pretty by the time I get up to this corner here. As we get a bit close to this corner, it's not looking good from here. I can see that erosion right in front of us there. That looks roughly anywhere between a foot, foot and a half. I know last time on the tractor, I just scoop all that sand from down the bottom of the hill I was just at and work it all the way up. It took me like three hours. Even this grass is starting to get overgrown. We won't get even a tractor up here. Not even the quad. That, that's the worst bit. This is always the worst bit right here. It's not too bad up there. We'll go have a look, but this is, no, it won't pass anything over here. I'm going to have to do a fair bit of work before I get up here. The only concern I've got is right under the middle, luckily, you can see where it's sunk, is where the watering system pipes come from the river, that solar panel I just put in. So it's right under the centre there, and between the two car tracks. It's 600 mil down. I reckon that's 600 mil. Luckily, the water is coming down either direction of the car tracks and leaving the centre in. Otherwise, there'd be trouble trying to bring this tractor up in this area here to repair it. Last thing I want to do is drop down and crush that poly pipe on the watering system. Clearly, this is the worst area. If I can get in without falling over, I'll stand here. So this is generally the normal road height. So it's probably up to my knee. I'd say that's going to be easy. Two foot washed out there. Once again, right through the centre there, luckily, is where that two inch hose runs for the watering system. Lucky it's not washed out. It's going to be bad enough now, I'm still trying to repair this without running over with the tractor. This is why we desperately need to get that road in across here. Because oh, it'd have to be at least four times a year I've spent hours doing this road up. It's only sand. So we need a gravel road up here and it needs to have spoon drains. We're going to bring this hill out on a 45 degree angle, spoon that out and put environment mat, environmental mat up the hill and plant that out so you're not getting the sand erosion down with a spoon drain with rocks all the way down. That way it's going to slow the flow and a pipe going under the road and then it'll spill back into the creek and that'll alleviate the water from gushing down this road. And obviously you've got to have the road dished off so the water's going off the edge of the road down to the creek or into the spoon drain because at the moment they currently run all the way down our tracks and that's why it's building up momentum down this hill and washing it out. I tried putting a few woo boys across and it worked about because they're constantly driving up here with the car and my sister brings up her four-wheeler it erodes out that woo boy and the water just where it's all eroded out, the water runs through and then it just slowly washes the rude boy out. But it worked as a temporary measure, but we need something permanent. We're up here at our fruit trees now. We noticed we couldn't get up here the last few weeks because the amount of rain that road had been washed out. I reckon three quarters of our apples, as you can see there, there, they've all rotted off on the tree because they haven't been picked. So we've got to get rid of them. We noticed if there's a few fruit flies hanging down, so we've got to get rid of all those dead ones. 
because the flies are hanging around. A lot of the fruit that is left on it has been stung. There's some more rotten ones there. We've got to remove them and dump them where I can alleviate the fruit flies. I noticed our dragon fruit's got a fair bit of fruit on it as well. There's probably, I don't know, maybe half a dozen, 10 dragon fruit on it. It's the first time it's fruited. We've had it planted now for, I'd say, be good three years. Also, mm, got some sensational custard apple here. I noticed the custard apple tree last time before we come up was full of fruit, but none were ripe. And this one was just on, it, on the ground. It wasn't rotten. We're just trying it now. And it's uh, sensational, sweet as. But as you can see, there's a fair bit of grass around here. Weeds. It needs remulsion. We can see the bare soil underneath the trees. But we use cane mulch and the crushing hasn't started yet. So we don't know if it's going to delay the crushing because of the amount of rain we had. So we rely on the cane trash on the ground to be baled and we use that as mulch. But luckily we had a load of rain, like I said, 34 inches in the last six months and specifically that nine and a half inches in the last month itself. Like I said, 34 inches in six months or 30 inches, I think it was. But nine and a half of those in the last month. So we haven't had to come up here and spend much time with watering these plants, luckily, but winter's just around the corner. We're going to have to do a lot of work up here. I noticed a lot of the trees got to have the tops cut out of them. We want to maintain them to about that 1.8, two meters in height, which is roughly six foot, and let the trees fruit out. So that way we're keeping more quality fruit a bigger tree you're pushing it out rather than height wise because you can't reach the top of those trees in the fruit and all the goodness goes to the growth rather than the fruit anyway though we've got a copious amount of work to do we've got to head back to the trial property now we've got to move the girls in the next cell so have a good morning have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening guys we're watching this from and we'll catch you later